Welcome to the Fan Club YouTube channel. Please make sure to subscribe, like this video, and comment down below. How much money would it take for you to get in a ring with Mike Tyson? Nowadays? Give me like 10 grand to cover some, some mortgage <laughs> bills. <laughs> I'll take a beating. Grand. I'll take a beating for 10K. Three rounds with Mike Tyson. How much? What's your price? Three rounds? I'll go like 10 million bucks. Hmm. I got to see what this guy looks like because like everything I've seen the last few years, yeah, I get it. He's been training, but uh, I... I just he's too old. He's old. Like he has a, some probably has some old man strength to him, <laughs> but like you're still faster than him. If, if you have any sort of like defense, you can maybe if he'll connect with you, but I don't know. I but don't know. Think about it. If he connects one yeah, of those, exactly. Like you're you're done. I don't know if we last three rounds. And I think he's got that that switch. He's got that mm -hmm. switch where it's like, even though he's old, that switch never never goes away. I think he would kick. Our asses and oh, God, maybe yeah. one punch, maybe a big stomach punch oh. would hurt bad too. <laughs> Who did <laughs> he fight brutal. recently? Because he had a fight not like I don't know if it was a year ago or Mike Tyson. Yeah, you, <laughs> he fought somebody. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He uh, he's been on a road to rebounding his career <laughs> lately. Looks like he is. Cause he's fighting Jake Paul in July on Netflix. You said, uh huh. Damn, my, my money's on Tyson. You're going Tyson, hey? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'd love to see the, the veteran teach the kid a lesson. Yeah. I don't know. Would that ruin Jake Paul's everything that he built so far? No way. Just because he's fighting a, a legend. It's an old man. It, it's probably going to be spinned off in the way his brother was versus uh, Mayweather, where it was kind of an exhibition. You know, they weren't meant to hurt each other. They'll put a spin on it to make him look good if he loses. Could be just a trip to the bank. Yeah. It's yeah. on Netflix. The so. big bank. That's a big bank they're getting one, too. That's a bank that none of us are allowed in. <laughs> no. Well, we have a special little episode today as we are joined by Stefano Cantali, <laughs> a.k.a. Mr. Heffy, our famous roller hockey goalie. He came into the show today to to join the gang. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. I appreciate the invite. It's always yeah. good to talk to you guys. Dude, it's nice. You you got here bright and early, too. You came with Lawson. You're just ready to go. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm getting ready for that dad schedule, so I'm up at 5:30. You know, oh boy, kind of making sure that I'm okay to do <laughs> stuff at that time. True, uh, you had an exciting time in your life. Terrifying. We'll go with terrifying. <laughs> I spoke to a, a past teammate of mine a couple weeks ago, and he goes, "It's it's interesting how well you can perform and be productive on so little sleep." That was his advice to me, mm. and I was like, "Oh, that's that's great news." <laughs> Do your eyes just always feel down, <laughs> tired, and baggy? I don't know. I'm not there yet. I'm hoping it's not yeah, like that. When, uh, when's the big day? Uh, she's due June 30th. Oh. Um, so roughly right around, around the that corner. Time. Yeah. Yeah. You might have a Canada Day baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what day is I'm Canada I'm American day? now. We're going yeah. 4th of July. <laughs> okay, okay. You could one or the other. You have a shot for one or the other. Yeah. Actually, right, Canada Day's the first? Yeah. 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 Um, but I think it'll be before that so it'll probably okay. be close for my birthday because i'm on the 13th that'd be cool um because so far she's been feeling stuff kind of ahead of schedule so we're assuming she'll come ahead of schedule do you know if you're having a son or a daughter a little girl that's oh, awesome i'm gonna be a girl dad you got some names uh picked out yet she's gonna be called gabriella we haven't gabriella. picked the middle name but gabriella is gonna be her name the room's nice. already pink and we got the wow. pink t-shirts mom already got me a pink hoodie to match like amazing dude i'm in trouble now i'll need a little no bad baby jumper. For yep. Yeah. <laughs> Will well, you be uh, urging her to become a goalie, following her father's footsteps? Definitely not. I can't afford that. <laughs> I, I'm looking at the price of stuff. I cannot afford it. <laughs> Let's go with the knee hockey pads until <laughs> yes. she grows out of them. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Heffy, so we got to know you, lucky, luckily enough, in Buffalo. That was the first time that we kind of uh, spent real time together. You knew Lawson a little bit before. Um You've always supported the boys coming to the No Bad Launch Party, um, came up with Hockey Day Minnesota. I, I hear there was a pretty heated pickleball match a few weeks ago. Um, but yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, obviously, you're big on social media as well as Mr. Heffy, one of our favorite goalies. Maybe our, our favorite goalie, I should say. I'll take that. That's a win. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, what, where do you want to start? I mean fellow canadian like some of you in here 
uh, from Montreal, Quebec. Don't ever go visit there. The city's beautiful, but it's not worth it. Um, <laughs> finally moved to Minnesota uh, and finally got my green card after three years. So that, that was been a good change. Big win. Um, just grew up playing hockey like you guys, and it's led me to here today. Part of the reason why I came to Minnesota, I said, as an adult, I kind of want to stay involved in the game. It's my turn to give back. And I'm sure everybody knows Minnesota's a state of hockey, so it was the perfect spot for me. Yeah, you've been pretty involved since... When did you move here? Um, when I moved here was like six months ago, but we've had a house here for about two years now. Wow, good nice. for you. It's pretty crazy how uh, how much you've gotten involved, too, in just six months. Mm -hmm. um, whether I see you've been coaching kids, joining leagues, um, all while working a job, pumping out content, baby on the way. How do you do it? Um little sleep i'm not, i i don't know what the term is but i don't sleep much anyways so two three hours a night um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then i just try to get involved i enjoy coaching a lot um now that i'm new here i'm trying to find a new place where i can volunteer in youth hockey i really like working with the little ones like i'm teaching them how to play where it's fun again um playing that's for my own sanity uh, you got i gotta do something that kind of calms me down and keeps takes the stress away so now I'm starting to play. You guys invited me into a league last minute, so like I, I had a league at the same time, which I'm kind of upset about. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm planning on doing a lot more. I'm in talks right now with uh, my wife to see if we can start doing some, some sort of charity weekend and raise funds to kind of do a little bit like I, I found out in War Road where they have a 24-7 rink. There's mm -hmm. no ice time. You can go skate. Let's try to do something like that here. That'd be insane. How do You'd you... you first uh, of your kind. You wouldn't be like all the, the city folk and... Rink managers here who yeah, charge a lot an arm and a leg for an hour of ice. <laughs> it's it's crazy. And back home, like rinks were three thirty an hour. Wow. And then when I asked the local rink close to my place, they said it was one eighty five an hour. So it's more affordable, but it's still it's still pretty expensive. Pricey. You know what I mean? Like you got to get a group of ten fifteen kids to make it affordable for parents mm -hmm. when they're already paying fifteen thousand dollars a year for hockey. Crazy. So I know you mentioned uh, when you were giving your little intro that you're giving back to the game. Where do you think you add the most value? for the youth um probably as a coach just because i've been through the ups and downs i've had coaches that were horrible people and i've had coaches that changed my life um so i i feel like i can use that experience to give back to them and just teach them how fun hockey can be it doesn't have to be a stress ball uh you're not er not everybody's gonna play in the nhl and you don't have to kind of worry about it you can enjoy stepping on the ice and that's kind of what i try to do even when i was coaching the junior goalies the message was always, guys, just have as much fun as possible. Because yeah. like I was telling Lawson in the car uh, last week, and I went to their playoff games, and they lost. So seeing all the 20-year-olds crying because they don't know if they're playing again next year, I just tried to emphasize, like, enjoy every second you get on that ice because you don't know when it's done. And, like, I'm sure you guys miss it too. Like, there, there's a lot – there's a, still a part of me that wishes I was back in juniors just playing hockey every day with the same group of guys. So you, you never know when it's going to be your last game, and you just got to enjoy it. Do you, uh, do you feel like – later on or even right now that do you want to be more a goalie oriented coach or you guys see a lot of the stuff you've picked up a lot of things that d-men and forwards do do you think you might get into the player side as well i'd like to try it um back home i was coaching defense a little bit and it went well um i just don't know if i want to do the competitive side yet because then you deal with the crazy parents you deal with the crazy travel schedules whereas when you're coaching mites or house league hockey there's still that fun aspect of he made a mistake all right come to the bench we'll learn from it it's all right um so i i think right now i'm sticking with the goalies because i can deal with the pressure side and that higher end hockey whereas if i were to coach a team fully i think i'd stick to the house league just to have a little more fun yeah, yeah. do you guys think that that hockey parents have always been like this crazy i don't know man because i hear from like my dad like my my grandpa my dad's dad like it just like what I've heard. It seems like it was so much more laid back, mm -hmm. like where the parents weren't as involved. It is like, I don't know if it was just growing up in Minnesota, but at least like Illinois, the parents that I was around growing up, like it was they were like, I don't know if crazy is the right word, but like really involved in like the hockey, uh, just like life with their kids. It's just like I feel when I say crazy too, I mean more of it in a negative way these days. I feel like I went to my fiance's cousins. U14 girls game two weeks ago. <laughs> and, you know, it's district playoffs, whatever. Losers done for the year. Big deal. Big deal for the players. But the parents were treating it like it was 
game seven of the cup final. <laughs> One association's parents was yelling at another's. Like two parents got into it and had to leave. Wow. I'm just like, it's eight o'clock on a Wednesday night. Like let's just chill out here and let the girls yeah. play. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, back home, I'm not gonna name names. I don't want to sue anybody, but there's a father that's well known in our organization for paying refs after games <laughs> to give his kids points. Well, Come he's on. He's playing U13 hockey. That's crazy. And wow. he used to go pay refs, and we'd see him. We caught him in the act, giving him a 50, like, hey, give him an assist, give him a goal, um, just so that he can boost his kids' stats for elite prospects. That's insane. I think one of the biggest things that is different, too, at least like from what I see, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like kids nowadays are more focused on one sport than, like, multi-sports. Granted, Minnesota's different because a lot of it's through high school, but, like, most other states, like if you're playing hockey, it's like nine months out of the year mm-hmm. easily. Through it, like youth, AAA, whatever. It's changed so much because I remember when I was a kid, it was hockey, soccer, a uh, little bit of basketball, and now it's hockey 24-7, like you're saying. They yeah. finished their season, they're immediately doing five skill sessions a week, five gym sessions. Like, be a kid. Go enjoy other things. Seriously. Yeah. I feel like uh, part of that is... Like, the accessibility now, like, there's so many training centers, so many, uh, like, coaches and opportunities for people to do that. And, like, the competitiveness from all these, like, families and parents and stuff. And it's just like, oh, my kid's doing this. So then it's just like, you kind of get that idea. Oh, maybe then my kid should be doing that because he's going to fall behind. And Mm -hmm. I just feel like that's just kind of where it's leading to just because people just don't want to fall behind. That's all parents. Yeah, absolutely. My kids, yeah. this. My kids doing that. Blah yeah. blah blah. But you know, and I'm sure maybe these ask, kids would want to yeah. try other sports. Like, yeah. let me go play soccer in summer. I'm running. I'm doing my cardio. I'm exercising. Mm-hmm. I'm getting good at two touch for when season starts. But like, <laughs> mom and dad are like, no, you got to go to skills training. You got to go to sk- skating training. Well, yeah. Why? Yeah, you can be a hockey player, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're a p- good athlete. Because I've seen plenty of my teammates not even be able to throw a baseball. <laughs> like, I'm in that you? category. Are I can't you? throw if my life depended on it. Oh, Heffy. you got to throw something. I can kick a ball. I can't throw. See, I can't kick that well. So here we go. Can you golf? Uh, what What do you call a good golfer? Like I play Under 100? 100 100? No, yeah, I'm under 100, 100. 110. It's not bad. I can drive 270, 280. I just can't putt if my life depended on it. I'm a five putt from a foot away. <laughs> Don't no get touch. the touch, eh? No, no touch. No. no touch. That's all right. We'll have to go play some golf this summer. Please. I have not played yet in Minnesota. Dude. We've barely played. It's hard. Who's the best golfer of the group? Probably Lawson, Lawson. or Will. I don't know. I think we're all pretty. Like, Lawson might be I just like a me. touch better, but I think. If we were to play 10 rounds, I think you would have the best overall score. I think you're good. I'm – well, I don't know. Like I, I like I said, he, I think I'm, like, compared to everyone. Good. You're really good on your home I've track up, do uh, very up at the cabin. You're really good at that home course that you got there. <laughs> home court advantage. <laughs> we'll be playing that a few times, so maybe we uh, we have a decider who the best <laughs> golfer is in the group. Because usually we play in teams, so it's kind of hard to tell. Scramble or – okay. For, like, a video's sake. Yeah, I understand, right? You you can't have a seven hour. And it's kind of fun to uh, to compete two on two. Yeah, mm-hmm. I saw a little bit of pickleball. The competitive side came out when, when me and Loss were on the same team. He's giving me pointers and stuff, and I could tell like we're not losing this. We were, we were not losing. No, yeah, we are. Did you sucking. sweep? Yeah, we yeah, swept. Swept. Oh, actually, it was fun. dude, last year, Heffy, we had a we did a pickleball tournament. There's like some courts like pretty close to here, and. I would say that was like probably the highest competitive level of like oh there was each stakes. other there were big stakes to that one yeah I forgot what the L A le- oh yeah that's right but yeah that that was comparable to like a hockey game how like competitive it was like if we're facing up against like one of our conference teams nice I look I I saw it for the first time. I saw a little bit in Buffalo but I feel like in Buffalo it was a bit too easy for us so we we knew we were gonna win but playing pickleball I saw it like I found my spot in the front and was like go up go up go up. And every time we'd get a point, I could see the yeah yeah. He and I I can't up. say it was just him because I was the same way going yeah we got this one, and then I was like we're playing for fun. Don't show them that I'm, I'm too competitive. I would rather lose to strangers than my friends. A hundred percent. It's worse because you walk into the office the next day and you know it they're going to eh? remind you. Yeah. You should see us playing mini sticks, man. Mini sticks gets competitive in here. I've yeah, been watching the lives. Hitting. I've we, been watching the yeah. lives. Frizz's commentary is great. That's oh, good. Thank you. Yelly and I are on a big losing streak yeah. right now, and it eats us alive. I mean, like it's bad. I, I can't say anything about it. From what I'm watching, they've been dominating. No every, way. Every game, every no game. way. 
Uh, They're getting lucky, man. They are legit farmers. getting lucky. It's not luck if the goalie's not making the same. <laughs> well, we suck at goalie. We never know who's our who's our better yeah. in that right now. We got it's literally sticks, every. We're having goaltending struggles. I mean, it's it's mini sticks. It's about size. Will uh, not will. Sorry, L- Yelly keeps chirping lossy in videos saying, "Look how small you are." I know he's <laughs> yeah, tiny. He's the tiny. Man is not making the save. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm pumping their Cuddy's tires, there. making them confident. Cuddy's been in net for them, and he's been pretty good. And Lossie's a sniper. Lossie has hands. He just gets lucky, man. <laughs> he just gets so lucky. Just wait till that luck runs out, Heffy. They're gonna go on a losing streak of a century. You ever heard the phrase "the puck doesn't lie"? Yeah, yeah. In yeah. this case, the ball doesn't lie. No, I don't no, think no. it's luck. We'll see. We'll see. We just have some internal issues on the team right now. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I, I just want to know how your knee's not finished. Like, we're too old for this. There's cows. So they're cows. My hand out. is. These are all. Good all slashes. these cuts are from just. Yeah, this one opens up every game. You guys got to get the real mini sticks. Cutty bleeds ones. through his sweatpants every game. <laughs> his knee's <laughs> ripped open. <laughs> That's we don't give up. enough ourselves enough time to heal, so I just keep reopening wounds you got to get kind of those uh you know the rollerblade uh knee, knee pads that yeah. with the plastic cups you could slide or, uh, around out there like the handball ones yeah you could slide around on those right there invest yeah we're invest too tough some of those at some, at some point it's, it's a tough, tough league it's a little crazy <laughs> a little bit of both we're playing knee hockey in an office and we're 26 years old so it's a little crazy and that just sounds like a job that i worked <laughs> <laughs> who else gets to say they play hockey at work yeah, there's not just many NHL people. players, so we're basically the same. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. Did you follow along any of the uh, the trade deadline stuff this week? Um, only what the empty netters have been posting. I haven't been able to see it. Been busy with work. They've been on it. Um, I I keep seeing Dan in the airport, just kind of giving one minute takes, freaking out about trades. Exactly. It was a pretty crazy day yesterday. I I tried to send him the Vegas one with Noah Hannah <laughs> last night. And they, he just laughed at me because <laughs> we would already heard about it way, like, like way hours before. before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was cold oh, news he gave him. I was just dying. Yeah, I was what time did you dying. send it to him? It was late. Oh, it was yeah. bad. 11 p.m. But hey, they, look at this hot take. It wasn't announced by the team yet. But then I went on Twitter and looked, and it was all over the place. Yeah, it was <laughs> around just, dinner time yeah. when it came out. Yeah, I was just laughing when he just replied that. But, no, it's been cool to see. It's one of the most exciting weeks for sure. Is today the de- or is tomorrow, tomorrow you said? Tomorrow like n- t- two or something. I can't believe the Knights just keep loading up. Why? The Avs keep loading up. I was going to say the Avs have made a lot Holy of Holy Who's got the biggest uh, Florida trade? loaded up. Who got the biggest player, you think? I don't know. I mean, Tarasenko should be. Yeah. He's probably the biggest name going to Florida. Yeah. But he hasn't been the same since he's been in St. Louis. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I think he'll be very, very happy. Oh, and, dude, going from uh, Ottawa to Florida? To sunrise, oh. Florida, hanging out down there. Yeah. He'll be just fine. So do you think Vegas Avs is going to be kind of the, the teams to beat? Well, after looking at these trades. Uh, I think the Avalanche. That's what I said this morning, the Avalanche. I watched the game last night. They beat the Red Wings like 7-2 or something. Oh, jeez. Really? And Red Wings are like pretty – they're relatively good. Yeah. But they spanked them, and they look freaking – like they look good. And obvi- they, well, they can just score at any moment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they have the firepower. They have a good decor. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's going to be interesting to watch in playoffs this year. That's for sure. But yeah, it's like the West what? is stacked. Yeah, well, I guess the East is kind of stacked too. But the West top three teams, top four teams: Dallas, Winnipeg, Vegas, and Colorado. I hope that's a fight. Dallas uh-huh. makes a push. I'm a big fan of Ottinger. Fair. I He's really a local hope- boy. I'm. Yeah, I've heard that. I didn't know that. He lives um, twenty minutes from you. Really? Or he's from Lakeville, relatively close to you. I'm still trying to figure out Minnesota. I don't nah, know where we're nah. Other side of them is the cities. But I, I'm hoping they make a push, just because I've been loving watching him play. He's been unreal the last like three years. It's it's his yeah. time to finally win. Yeah. Ugh. Is it is it just me <laughs> we're or just in Dallas? <laughs> do you guys feel like the last I don't know maybe four years? The NHL teams, like, 90% of the teams in playoffs all have, like, a really good shot and are just, like, beasts. And then kind of when we were growing up, there was, like, a couple hot ones, but then, like, the other teams were always kind of just average. Yes. I feel like it's just gotten so Mm -hmm. competitive and so good. All the players are good. Like, everyone's really good nowadays. I think it changed because when we were growing up, every team had, like, a full line of just fighters. And now all four lines are skilled guys who can play hockey. So it just changed the game. 
Because usually you were right. I think like like last year, Florida would have been better, but they had so many injuries yeah. at the yeah. end that I think there's something to do with players able to recover faster or something too that they're locked and loaded for playoffs and the, the healthiest team wins. Well, mm-hmm. did you see what uh, Laz posted? I think it was a couple days ago. He was talking to the Panthers coach and. Uh, he was talking about training camp, and he goes, uh, the the guys were saying it was so much harder than last year. He goes, I'll be honest harder. with you, he goes, we didn't change a single drill. Minute to minute, camp was identical from last year. Damn. But the guys came in that much more prepared. There was that much more skill on the ice that they had to compete at least 10% harder. Crazy. Wow. Players are getting better, and there's more of them. And they <laughs> they did play through June also. Yeah. yeah. Dude, uh so what are your guys' thoughts, like being a player that's getting traded off of one of the, like, like an avalanche, for instance, like a Stanley Cup contending team. Like, how do you think that that feels to be that player? That I mean, you're you got to be a good player to be traded off the team because they're looking for a good player in exchange. So like, that must like to me. I think that fe- that feels so shitty. <laughs> like, it's Bowen, thing. Bowen Byram. Yeah, like Bowen, for example. Yeah, I don't, that sucks because he's, he's he's good. Young. He's young, and he gets shipped off to Buffalo, Effie's hometown. Yeah, Buffalo. <laughs> like that'd just be such a tough feeling and. I don't know, like when you are part of a team for that long through a season and then you get dished, right, a <laughs> couple days before. I mean, it's definitely got a sting. But at the same time, do you think maybe he asked for the trade? Maybe he wanted to go. Maybe he wasn't happy there or something like that. We don't know the full story, right, when these trades come out. Yeah. And I think it'd be cool to kind of get both players' reactions to it. Mm. Um, but maybe he wasn't happy there or – I don't know. I, it, it's hard to say, but it, sure it's, middle, it's definitely got to stick. I'm sure middle stat was thrilled. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. I'm excited to see what he does in the abs. What yeah, the support system was, he's going to have. Everyone was chirping him in the comments. Actually? I saw. What were they saying? Because, like, I don't know, someone broke the news in a way, like, really hyping him up and saying that he was, like, a really big-time player or whatever. Uh-huh. And then people just, like, kind of shredded it and just kind of <laughs> broke his stats down and how... He really peaked in, like, World Juniors and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Jeez. So we'll see. Yeah, it should be interesting. Maybe those the GMC is, like, a deeper skill or something that wasn't being used. And you got to love the comment section. Yeah. The guys I the always NHL like hitting the comment section. <laughs> it's the best part. Like, we're a bunch of guys behind the screen chirping guys <laughs> that are doing the job. They're in the <laughs> NHL. We can't be saying that, oh, he's not good. He peaked in World Juniors. At least he played there. <laughs> yeah. He's having... A career year. He is. He's really? isn't he leading this like the Sabres really underperformed this year because last year like you had Tage Thompson who like went off. I'm pretty sure Middlestead's like was leading their team in points before getting traded. And it wasn't even like he was a point a game. Like he was like below that. Yeah, really? I don't know. They already took him off the Sabres roster, so <laughs> I had to go to the Avs website. Damn. Yeah, he's our, he's got forty seven points in sixty two games. That's a good last number. year's career high is fifty nine, so He'll, he'll get it if he's on McDavid's <laughs> or not McDavid, McKinnon's line. That'll yeah. be an easy. Just adding more plus skill, 30. dude. Just me and me and Will yesterday. So we we dropped off her like Sophie Squad hoodies to uh, this guy named Terry. He's just uh, his his daughter plays uh, for the PWHL team in Ottawa. Okay. And I didn't know this. I guess Will knew it or heard it somewhere. But he was talking about the pwhl rule for playoffs uh, you can explain it because you kind of have a better idea it's for it. the draft oh it, yeah for playoffs and the draft yeah too so like, like it's crazy i think the one seed gets to pick who they play in playoffs what yeah, that is true which Why? like i mean when you think about it, it like you're probably going to pick the team that would have came in the last four there's only four teams that go there's only six yeah you but can pick between three and four mm-hmm but that's you just pick weird. whatever team you match up better against, really. Yeah, I mean, it, it gives you the advantage, but that's weird to me. It should just be, well, you know, you're going to play the fourth place team. That's how it is, and you move forward that way. Yeah, but the other rule the other I rule thought was, was even crazier. Once your team's eliminated from playoffs, you still like you still get a certain amount of points that go toward your draft pick the next year. So you can't just tank. So like the Hawks, for example, when they were officially eliminated from even making a playoff, like plays yeah from that day forward they they need to win because if you win the most games out of all the other teams that are eliminated from playoffs whoever like gets the most points can get that first pick so the two teams the five and six in the pwhl are fighting for that first their pick. final <laughs> like five games actually still really matter so they can battle for that first 
draft so wait, pick. Okay, so it's only the bottom two teams. Because I say the first place the team doesn't teams. get the first. Yeah, no, first no, no, it's no. only for teams that aren't going to be making playoffs. So I feel like it's just a thing for Keep a team with, with I kind of like leagues, that. It's but, incentive yeah. to like not tank. Like. Yeah, that I like, so that you can't tank the season. You still have to do something if yep. you want to pick. That makes sense to me. Imagine having that in the NHL, that that rule instilled where it's like you had teams like the Ducks, Hawks, or like Sabers, like teams that aren't going to be making playoffs. Like instead of them kind of pissing off the rest of the season, like they actually have to play and win games to like get a higher draft pick. So I like that because you got to fight for it, right? You, you, instead of doing the lottery, because I always think the lottery's rigged every time they're pulling those weird. cards. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it kind of sucks because. I know at that point they usually call up a lot of the younger guys, say, hey, come get some games. So you're kind of taken away from those guys who might never play in the NHL and get a couple games just for for a career purpose like that. Yeah, I see both sides of that. Yeah, I think it's just a rule because there's there's only six teams. Right. So they're just like... Are they expanding next year? I don't know. Potentially. Yeah, there could also, like, yeah, with the amount of teams in the NHL, like, I don't know, the... I don't think it would work because there could be a team that literally loses out from the last yeah. game of the season and then they For just sure. end up with it. Like, yeah. they're that close anyways. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. It'd be just a cool thing to experiment on. No, yeah. No tanking. No tanking. I don't tanking. know if teams actually tank or not. That'd be kind of Imagine if they lame. did what they did in Europe where the bottom seed team gets uh, really demoted out. to the relegated and the top team comes up. That'd, That'd be, be interesting. Yeah, that would be. The bottom team the NHL gets moved down to the AHL. That'd be that, sweet. And the winner gets moved up to the NHL. That would be crazy. That'd keep it competitive. Holy now cow. Now you can't finish last. Imagine like if the, the Montreal <laughs> Canadiens were in the AHL. I don't I'm think okay they'd have that. no I'm one going to the games. Fan. I know, I know. But that just think like that historic hockey city. Got to win, man. Gets Dude. demoted and they're traveling to freaking Des Moines, Iowa to play Do the Iowa Wild. Do a better job of recruiting. <laughs> Stop trying to follow the... And I'm going to trash my hometown here, but they always have this system of we need to have a mostly French team. We need to do this because it's part of the Still? city culture. It's always going to be like that. The fan base will never let it change. Crazy. So if that's the case, you can't do that. Now you need the best players to play. Yep. If not, you get relegated and you're going to lose to Laval with Kaz and Net. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> Man, like if that was if that rule got put in place for next year, <laughs> it'd be awesome. Man, like, like Montreal, the Blackhawks, you got Bedard playing in the AHL. Yeah, that's one of his <laughs> that would be bottom nuts. four teams oh. get switched out. Because they do that in soccer, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think most leagues in soccer. But then you'd have to think of the trades that would happen. Because yeah, now they get sent odd. down. Like, the, the trade market would be crazy. Yeah. God, that'd be crazy. Good idea, Heffy. You should bring that to the board. Let's go talk to Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. So Bettman. Everybody Mr. hates Heffy's him already anyways, right? You. We got a million dollar idea. We're going to expand this league <laughs> to the AHL. So this year with all the teams remaining fair like who still have a fair shot, not someone like the Habs or the Hawks that are at the bottom. Who is one player that you think really deserves a cup finally? I'm going with Jake. Jake I'm, I'm going with him. I got to support the How many goalies. years has he been playing? Like 4 or 5. five I think he's 5. No, oh, he'll get his cup. One and he's day. been dominant the last three years. Like, a lot of people were saying they didn't know if he was ready for that starting role because he got it really young. Mm-hmm. And he's been unreal since. He's been consistent. He gives him a chance to win. And he's so fun to watch. Yeah. I was going to, I mean, okay. Yes. But if I'm going with kind of how I, f- I feel bad for Flurry. I know it's his last season. I'd love for him to win, but he's not winning this year. So I got to go with kind of. Do you think they're going to make the sense. playoffs? I think they'll make the playoffs. I think they'll make a push, but they're not winning it. No. And I feel bad for him because I know it's his last year, and mm-hmm. he deserves one last one. Yeah, I was thinking he was going to get traded. I thought so, too. I thought so, too. Well, I mean, it's not over yet. We never know what's going to come. Because yeah. Gusty's ready for the net and send them to a team that can use him for playoffs because he's still a top goalie. He can still win you a cup, even at how old he is, which surprises me. But mm-hmm. it would make sense to get rid of him now. He's still worth something. Yeah. I would have to say two players, McDavid and Dreisaitl. The duo, it's hey? It's time. The yeah. dynamic duo. Yeah. yeah. It's time for them to make a run. They yeah. figured it out. They've finally been winning. They, they figured out it's what true. was going on. But um, we'll see. He just can't do it alone. The two of them can't do it alone. You can have 300 points. It's not going to It's not gonna. The abs the are going to steamroll them. They're the, going to steamroll them if they play. Yeah, them. they just won, though. You don't want them to win again. 
You're mm-hmm. right, but at least the Avs are a well-rounded team. I'm just saying who I want and who I think deserves it, and that's 97. I'm still going to play that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's Lawson time. Lawson seconds out. Frizz, uh, who you got, buddy? Yeah, I put some thought into this one, and <laughs> honestly, I think there's a lot of guys on the, the Rangers that have yeah. been, been around, and they're an older team. Okay. And feel like just the team in general has <coughs> just really rallied the last few years and created a lot of hype and like Truba big Here. big Jets guy for like eight plus years the other uh top forward there I forget his Panarin. name Panarin Panarin no, got a cup though not Panarin the uh Trocek Sabanajad yeah Sabanajad <laughs> I said that name wrong yeah Kreider exactly like they're Sabanajad. just an older veteran team that's just been buzzing and yeah I don't know we'll see I'm surprised you it. didn't pick the Jets, like any Jets players. There's, there's like maybe a few years ago, like Wheeler and Bufflin, but like I don't want, right now I don't want Wheeler to win a cup. That, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I guess Wheeler's on the Rangers too. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah, they do have an older squad. I want Kachuk. I want Panthers to win. I love watching them play, especially yeah. in playoffs. He's They're fun. Beast mode. Celsius. Yeah. I would like. I would love to see a McDavid versus Florida. Dude. Big travel for oh, the oh, cup that's final. That's real big. That big would be a high Vancouver. Score. That would be a high scoring series. Vancouver, Vancouver and Florida. Florida, Florida would be oh. crazy. Yeah. Wow, that would be that would be it would be so hard on everyone. The they reporters, could, they the could players. do it too. They yeah. probably deserve. I feel like they'd guys. fly out like a week early, practice there the whole week, so that you can get your legs under you. Yeah. Yeah. It's just after game two, then it's just back yeah. and forth. I st- I think that the hardest team is is going to be. Avalanche. I think that wh- whoever the Avalanche has to play. Apparently their goalie isn't good. I is don't it, even know who their goalie is. Gorgiev. Gorg- 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 Maybe they'll get Flurry. <laughs> that wouldn't be a bad pickup. Uh, Gorgiev's not a – I like watching him play, but he's never had that consistent pressure on him. So will he be able to handle it? That's going to be the test. And, I mean, he has the team in front of him. So if you're getting 20 shots a night from the outside the outside of the the zone, it's it's easy saves. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, I mean. don't know if he'll even get that kind of a test this year. McDavid's gonna scream down the wing <laughs> and just fire him by on all playoffs. And I think McCarr's gonna just stop him, just he, be in his face all game. McCarr got his first hat trick last night. Jeez, Jeez. unreal. Unreal. That's crazy. I was watching this game. It was like two two. I don't know what the heck happened. They after. they won seven two. Seven two <laughs> final. Wow crazy i remember playing versus him every time he got the puck all you heard from from the coach was everybody on him <laughs> all five guys would charge him did he I, score on you ever yeah. nice little bar down after dangling five guys that's okay. great did you keep the puck i wanted to <laughs> i wanted to i knew this guy was gonna play in the nhl well, i don't know where it went ref Can't did you the hear puck. the story about lawson playing to get playing with him you played with mccarr lawson thought he was better than him i gotta hear this story yeah lawson basically taught him everything Okay. Okay. I mean, I could see it. Lawson's a skill guy. So scale. Skater. So it makes we, sense. We we saw it in Buffalo. Those hands. He was going up and down the rink. No problem. He's the Kale McCarr of the Spit and Chicklets Cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So our our team is ramping up now. Like, is it like playoff starting to get playoff mentality where they're playing a little harder than they were back? A I few think so, ago? but I also feel like those who know they're in playoffs, the veterans are making sure that they don't get hurt. They're mm-hmm. making sure that they stay healthy. So I feel like it's a mix of the two. The top well, teams are going to be careful. Most teams still have like twenty games still too, so they do still need to. Yeah, they got to win like another four or five. Roughly, you also have to like, I mean, every team kind of does it, but you have to plan in the back of your head like, all right, if this team wins a certain amount of games and we win a certain amount of games, we're going to be facing them, and maybe we don't want to face them in the first round. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think that's where the use of the players comes in strategically now. If there's a game where yeah. You know what's going to get chippy. Take your big guys out, put in the young guys. Yep. Um, don't overplay your goalie because you don't want him getting tired or hurt. Uh, you don't want another Tampa situation where Vasilevsky's out um, and things like that. So it, it's going to be interesting to watch for sure. And it'll be nice to see a lot of rookies getting their, their debuts. Yeah. Which fan base is hungriest for a cup right now that's still in the running? It's got to be It's got to be Toronto. Yeah, it has to be. I was gonna say that or Edmonton. Every year on social media is Toronto's year, apparently. So we we gotta go with them. I have another sneaky one: Vancouver. 
Yeah, they they still have that salt in their mouth from the riots in <laughs> Boston. Have they ever won a cup? I don't think no, so. The Sedin so. brothers. And they, that city wants one bad. I can tell. <coughs> and, yeah. Uh, hopefully, if they do get to <laughs> to the cup and they lose in Game Seven, they don't burn down the city and <laughs> flip cop cars and and uh, everything that, downtown. But we'll see. If that happens again, I d- I can't imagine what's gonna happen. The two times they make it to the finals, losing seven. Yeah. What's going to happen if, if Toronto ends up winning? What do you think will happen the with that? Same, when same the Raptors thing. won, when the Raptors won, people were – that was – like there's millions of people in that city. Yeah. So the it, city shutting down for a yeah. week if they win. Really? Oh, yeah. When they, when they won, my Ruben in college was there, and he said it. He goes, bosses knew you weren't showing up to work. It was just an absolute disaster. <laughs> it was Bender week times 10. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. <laughs> Do you think that hot stick will stay hot for them to no. go deep in the playoffs? They're they're not making it. They're not winning it. There's no way. I think they're a first round exit. Oh, oh okay. That'd Mark that sting. down, Cud. That's his prediction. That'd be a stinger. Yeah. I can't imagine that feeling if your if your team finally just won it. God, that'd feel good. Oh yeah. That yep. would just Let's we have to remind awesome. everyone of me and Will's lifetime bet. Yeah, I'm nervous. Right you got a better chance this year. What's the lifetime bet? So came up with this bet uh, at the shack or their old college house a few years ago, and it's whoever team wins the cup first owes the other guy money. It's lifetime. So mine's the Jets and his is the Wild. I think Will's gonna win that one. You think so? I think the Wild wild? win it before the Jets. Wild are always the most medium team ever. But just wait, man. But they like Hellebuck's getting old, and Gussie's just getting started. Now we have Hellebuck for seven years. Yeah, he's getting old though. But he's he's up there. He's not the same. He's got cobwebs in his glove. (laughs) (laughs) Those cobwebs are still making saves though. I, I think the Wild win it before the Jets. I think the Jets could make a run this year. I think they could win I'm one or two rounds. I'm hoping they can get s- one more piece before tomorrow. Who would, who do you, who do they need? A goal D-man, scorer? They need second, a maybe five, six D-man. A good shutdown PK they guy is just going to eat pucks. Get Logan Stanner. Stanner. Wait, Stanner could be a, a trade bait. Get Rempe on that team. They'll be unstoppable. <laughs> He he Stanley and Rempe. Imagine Rempe in playoffs. Yeah, I was oh, going to say that. Nice. He's going to be making smokes. some noise. He might That's have to, scary. Oh, they might have to sit him for the next month just to rest up for that. Okay, I was watching a game this week, and that guy literally run, like he skates full speed. They try to hit guys. Oh, yeah. He's dangerous. Like He's fun to watch, but nobody wants to play versus him. I give it a couple of years, and everybody's going to be staying away. Minnie's on the ice, just dump the puck. Scary, man. If he connects with someone open ice full speed, they're dead. He's got 39 pims in eight games. Damn. Have you seen the, the interviews with, um, why can't I think of his name right now? The Toronto guy he fought. Reeves. Reeves. And he was saying, like, the kid was super excited to ask me to fight. He goes, I've never had that happen to me before. <laughs> Usually Dude, guys insane. are nervous, and he was just like, let's go, let's go. Oh, my gosh. Especially <laughs> when he was already beat up. Like, his hands <laughs> must have hurt. His face was half crushed in. That's pretty yeah. impressive. It's a, you, good, it's a good way to get a payday. Correct me here. I mean, he like he holds his own, but he's not like beating these guys up. Like he's taking a pretty good beating on every one of these fights. Oh yeah, I, it kind of looks like he's a punch dummy afterwards. Yeah, but he's holding his own. Like, but it's just his face afterwards. <laughs> like <laughs> he's, he's not prettiest. just running through these guys and like demolishing everyone. Like he's he's six seven, so he's big, but he like is still taking shots every time. But I think after now he's a rookie, right? He's getting the feel for it. In a year or two, he won't be taking the same beatings. Now yeah. that he has the experience, game film, <laughs> studying it. How d- how does that film work? Click a button. Let's see Rempe st- shifts. Fight, fight, <laughs> fight, fight. Seriously, I mean, if you look at this game against the Devils on February twenty second, he had seventeen penalty minutes and thirteen seconds time on ice. <laughs> <laughs> he blew that guy up. Uh, oh, that was I, that hit scared me, man. I was scared as a fan watching that. Thirteen <laughs> seconds. <laughs> That's hilarious, though. That's a great stat line. Got Good. dressed up for 13 seconds of ice time. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, game day money. Yep, yep. So, Effie, you've been, uh, you said you've been part of the state of hockey for about six months now. What's the biggest thing you've learned about about hockey here? Were you surprised or did you kind of think that you knew what you were getting yourself into? I had an idea of what I was getting myself into, but after watching some high school hockey, they're better than half the junior teams I've seen play out, w- out east. Mm-hmm. They like these. Some of these players are unbelievable. 
You look at Minnetonka's team. You look at some of the guys on Maple Grove, and they are absolute units going up and down the ice. You would think that they'd be more physical players, but they're skill guys. They can't, and they're the, just the so ref, dominant. The refs are soft. Yeah, I've noticed Minnesota. that too. I've yeah. noticed that too. No hitting. No hitting. No <laughs> after the whistle. You know how you guys are like if you touch the goalie, you're gonna get in his face. Calls everybody right away. It's just like let it happen. It's hockey. It's not soccer. You're, we're playing a physical sport. Yeah. Um, but high school hockey is a lot of fun to watch. Very, very fun. Um, have you experienced the tourney before? I have not. And I you probably go, won't man. be experiencing it this year. You gotta go at least on TV you'd be able to Yeah, I'm watching I'm watching the games online, but I, I want to go in person at some point. Yeah, in person's a lot different uh atmosphere. We were talking about that in the car on the way here, and it's just it's crazy to think that in high school you have ten thousand people I watching. Oh dude. Back home you'd get like fifty people at a game, maybe. In Montreal, if you play high school hockey, it's because you didn't make the triple A's. It's a uh-huh. step below. It's not the opposite. Yep. So same it's crazy. In yeah, we went to uh Last week or maybe two weeks ago, we went to a section game, and it was it was Edina against uh, YZ, and it's so cool seeing like literally a high school student section and like a good chunk of the town go to these games, and that's not even like that's to get to the tournament. Like it's crazy, like how much hype and fans they get at these games. There, there's more hype at these high school games than I had in college. It's I think it's comparable to Texas football. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, I think it's cool because when you look at the numbers of all like the good or decent players on these teams, only a small handful of them are gonna keep playing. Yeah, like some maybe a lot will try out juniors, whatever it won't work. They'll end up washed up D three, like us. There's nothing. There's, there's nothing really washed up about D three. There's only a few that really make it all the way. So the fact that these kids can have that memory. Of like this is the my my out of hockey yeah. at eighteen years old. And they're like, yeah, I'm just going to college next year. Yeah, whatever. So like crazy. that's a cool memory to have. A hundred percent. But the only thing that I found shocking is that guys actually stop after high school. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you try to play juniors even for a year? You know yeah. what I mean? Like you can stay here, go to a local college, take some classes. There's a bunch of junior teams in Minnesota. Yeah, just play another year. Why would you stop there? I think it's a different mentality here. Like what we were talking about earlier, like hockey for a lot of these kids, like it's just another one of the sports that they play in high school. Like yeah. my brother last year, like half the team like golfed or played football prior. Okay. But, like those are not like the top players, obviously, but like the vast like role players on the team, like they play like two, three sports and hockey is just one of them. Which is nice, right? You're getting that full high school experience, but it's just, it's still crazy to me. And even when I talk to these guys, their mindset is, the big deal is playing in the Minnesota high school tournament. Mm-hmm. If yeah. I did that, I accomplished my goals. Yeah. Yeah. I was listening to a couple of the games while I was making dinner last night. I had it on TV, and there was two players in one of the teams that are committed D1 to play baseball. I was just like, that's, that's, that's cool. pretty cool. That's, that's sick. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. If, you're, if you can play that high up at both level in both sports. Um, we had two guys in college that played baseball and football. It was cool to see. Wow. So you, don't, you don't see that every day. Yeah, you don't. Mm-mm. You don't. That's super sweet. So happy, have to ask this this question. Uh oh, <laughs> why are goalies weird? <laughs> oh come on, <laughs> you're throwing me under the bus right now. You know, there's just this stereotype that everyone likes to make fun of the goalies a little bit. They say they're cut from a different cloth. I think I'm sure you don't agree, but I had to ask. No, no, we're special. We're we're 100 special. I mean, to get to be standing in front of a puck coming at you, and some of these guys can have. Some of these guys have muffins. Some of these guys have the hardest shot I've ever seen. <laughs> and not flinch, not get scared, and kind of enjoy doing that. You, you, not, you need to be a little bit on, on the crazy side or missing a couple screws in your head. And I saw this uh, this past Monday when in skate with the junior team. They put two forwards in nets, and these guys were flinching at every shot. Was, <laughs> I wish I had my camera. It was the funniest thing ever. But I don't think we're weird. I think it comes with a sense of, well, we weren't good as forwards, so if we want to play the sport, we got to do something else. I might as well get hit by stuff. Because if I look back at my day, I was a defenseman, and I was awful. Like, I was in the corner just trying to reach for Pac, stay away from me, couldn't skate for the life I'm of me. I'm sure you blocked a lot of shots. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that w- I had one purpose, and it was get hit by that. So I was like, I might as well wear better padding and do that again. Um, but, yeah, and I think the weirdness gets worse over time. Because as a kid, it's just funny, right? Like, nobody has a hard shot. It's like, oh, I'm on the ice at all times. Mm. You know, I have the coolest equipment. And then the older you get, you kind of realize that, oh, some of this stuff is going to hurt me. Broken bones here and there. 
And but at the same time, you're like, well, there's nobody else that's going to do it. And it's the only way I'm going to play at a high level. So I might as well keep doing it. And you just get used to it. And at some point, you don't feel it anymore. Yeah. Well, I think every sport has that one super <coughs> unique position. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Goalie, I would say a pitcher in baseball probably has super interesting techniques and they're kind of they're kind of an outlier. Yeah. Kickers and, kickers and punters and football. Definitely soccer goalies. That would be horrible. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Soccer goalie. But no, that's you explain you that, that really ball. well yeah, because yeah. like I never thought of that way because like for us, like as you get older, the chance that you could switch between center wing, even defenseman, vice versa, like it's pretty relatively easy. But if you're going from a goalie to any position, like that's just not going to happen as the higher you get. Yeah, and that's why, like, uh, when I was playing, I was a defenseman for five years, and I was awful. I was always awful. I was just good at getting hit by the puck. So when I finally convinced my parents to let me switch, it felt natural, but at the same time, I had a fair chance of playing at a higher level. Yeah. And it was different practice, different everything, but I knew that, okay, this way I can continue playing the game I love and play at the highest level I could possibly get at, whereas if I would have stayed as a player... I would have been useless. You yeah. guys skated with me at the pond. I'm I'm lost out there. I have no <laughs> idea what I'm doing. How would you, what would you say to, like, or how do you personally, when you were playing college and junior, deal with the fact that, like, a lot of times blame for people who don't truly know the game is put on the goalies? Um, To be honest with you, it that never actually affected me. Hmm. Even as a kid, that was the one thing that... I didn't care if a coach said it was my fault. I didn't care if my teammates said, hey, you should have stopped that. I kind of knew if it was a good or bad goal. If it's a three-on-one and the guy put it off the three posts, there's nothing I can do. Um, so I did pretty good with that. But for those who struggle with it, just go watch the film. At the end of the day, you know if you did bad or not. If you're playing at a high enough level, you understand the difference between two and you'll learn it from the film. If you're a kid, forget what they're saying. Just have fun. If you're playing house league, just have fun playing the game. Win or lose, it doesn't matter. You're playing because you want to be with your friends. You want to play the sport, and you want to have some have a good time. Yeah, well said. I got a. My dad was a goalie. My youngest brother's a goalie, and I always loved it. So you're the outlier then. I always. It's loved a family it. of goalies, and you're the <laughs> outlier. I like giving them crap, and I always say that's the goalie's fault. Did you ever watch uh, hockey together? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever, uh, like, when you were playing college at a way <laughs> way barns? Did you ever get fans calling you a sieve? Get sieved? S- all, you ever get sieved? All the time. I've had. Uh, it, it's sieve, some of sieve. my favorite memories from college. Like doing one of these sieve, sieve, every sieve. time, or at RIT, they start yelling, "It's all your fault! It's uh-huh. all your fault!" And they have a nice student section. Yeah, and it just it gets so loud, and it makes you smile. Like I just got scored on, but that was worth it. Yeah, um, you always let one in just to hear it. Hey, just a little bad goal here and there. We're winning. We're winning the game anyways. Like, oh, okay, do it, do it. I want to hear it. Um, That's great. But college fans are the best. I remember. And when I played Michigan, no, no, Ferris State in Michigan, the first game, they had posters printed of my girlfriend, my brother, my mom, with stuff written on it, drawings, and I was like, this is the best thing ever. It's so funny. See, you have to have the mindset as a goalie to just take that stuff. Well, they also had a poster of Johnny Laz missing four front teeth, (laughs) bleeding, and they're like, is this what you guys look like? Like, roasting him. It was the funniest thing ever. That's great. What would you say your uh, maybe strangest pregame ritual is? Oh, boy. Um, I had bad rituals when I was playing midget triple A. Um, juniors in college, I just had a routine, but it wasn't as bad. But in midget, I had to watch either the Miracle Movie or oh. the Mighty Ducks before every game. Come on. Before every game. I swear to you, I'd get home from school, forget about homework, I'd watch the movie. I had my <laughs> chicken, broccoli, and rice three hours before, and then I was going to the rink. So you probably have watched those movies over a hundred times easily easily wow that yeah. is something it was it was a we- and it started back in bantam two years before because i was watching them before training because i was tr- i was nervous for tryouts i always used to get cut every year so before every tryout day i'd watch a movie jim craig and i did well and i was like oh i'm gonna keep this going so i did it all the way till the end of midget and then when i got the juniors i realized i was a bit crazy how did you break that? that um just by forcing myself to get to the rink early because in juniors i was I had a different junior experience than most people. I stayed home. And back home in Quebec, you have this CJEP or kind of junior college that you do. So with my school schedule, I couldn't go home to watch a movie. So I'd finish school, had to rush to the rink. Mm. And it kind of forced me to get out of that routine and yeah. develop more of a warm-up routine that made sense. Go play go play some soccer with the guys, do my hand-eye coordination, and get dressed. Yeah. 
No, wow. more, no more movies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. I think uh, we got a game, hey? Yeah. Oh, boy. You can't be looking at the answers. I oh, got them boy. right here. But uh, lose. we're going to play two rounds of this. There's two categories, and you three need to fill out the top five out of this category. Top five. I think I so kind of like Family Feud? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Top five. What are the top five most downloaded apps in the world? TikTok. TikTok one. Yeah, that's up there. Facebook. Yep. Instagram. Snapchat. Kay. You got the three easy ones. Okay, yeah, you got four. Four. And so we need that last one, eh? YouTube? No. Uh, please don't Candy say Candy Crush. No, so no, no. Please don't say it's Tinder. Not Tinder. Oh, oh. Smart uh, Heffy. Clash of Clans? No. Is that a game? It is not. Oh, okay. It's not X? Mm-mm. Hmm. That took me a second to realize that was Twitter. Robin Hood. No one wants to invest. What no one wants to be? invest their change. <laughs> nope. Uh, ESPN. No. Netflix? Mm-mm. I'm trying to think of a good hint. Yeah. Uh, Fox News. You keep guessing American things. It's the world. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to think. If it's not a game... And it's not, we named all the social medias, all the big ones. Yeah, we named uh, all the big Spotify? ones. Spotify? Mm-mm. Should I say Apple Music? <laughs> <laughs> also, no. Uh, what are we missing here? SoundCloud's Is music it uh, WhatsApp? Twitch? WhatsApp. Really? Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. They love that app in India. You use it, hey? I you use can text the world. Yeah. yeah. I nice. didn't even think of that. that I'm on it every one. day. WhatsApp is uh, the greatest thing ever. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. It's the only way I can talk to my sister in Scotland. Mm-hmm. That's how only I still way. talk to my teammates in Belgium. It's pretty fancy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, next. Briz, I feel like he's going to be really good at this one. <laughs> Top lifetime movie grosses. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, Top five. Top five. Oh, well, we have Avatar 1. Correct. That is number um, one. Titanic. Yeah, what li- what number you think? Four. Yep. Is a Dark Knight Rises oh, one of them? You think? Um, yeah. Avatar one, Titanic four. There's got to be a Marvel Avengers movie there. Endgame. Yeah. Yeah, that's two. Jeez, I knew Chris dude. would be good at this. Avatar two. Is that Way of Water? Yeah. Yeah, that's number three. <laughs> oh, it's five. I'm a movie guy. Um, is one of the Hobbits on there? Mm-mm. Harry Potter. This movie came out in 2015. Shoot. That Is it doesn't comedy help me or out at all. Action. Fast and Furious? No. Oh, that was a good Is one. It, Greek Is action the, good, the right genre? Yeah. And it's number three Sci-fi. or four? Five. Sci-fi. Five. Interstellar. Sci-fi, yeah. Uh, it's not Back to the Future. That's an older movie. Star Wars? It is a Star Wars. Uh, uh, Star Wars. I can't remember the oh. new ones. I don't remember the names of them. Um... Yeah, I can't remember. Episode the seven. Yeah, I, I The Force Awakens. Okay. Man, we're missing one more. Oh, you crushed him, dude. Nice. That was Avatar, Avengers uh-huh. Endgame, Avatar Way of Water, Titanic, Star Wars. Nice. It's too easy for Frizz. Holy smokes, I knew you'd be good at that you one. You should have <laughs> given him like the list between fifteen and twenty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here, we'll do this other one. Cody just sent me a link. We'll Uh-oh. do one more since that was too easy. Okay. Frizz is too smart. Top five most famous actresses. Oh. In the world right now, All according right. to Ranker.com. Oh, boy. I'm going to be useless right. in this one. Actresses. Top so five. We got Sydney y- Sweeney. I know you know all five of these names. <laughs> no. All right. Who's the, the actress that was in Barbie? I think she's got to be oh, up there. Oh, Margot Robbie? Number two. All right. Okay. Good. Good start. Good start. Good start. Good start. We <laughs> got uh, who else is a famous actress? Here? Jennifer Aniston. Give me the money. Not top five. Mm. She was on the headline photo, so I got confused. But no. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be useless in this one. I don't. Movies, I don't know celebrity names. TV shows. Um, uh, what do we got here? I'm trying to think mm. what's what's in out lately that are big movies. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Oh, Barbie. Yeah, Barbie. Barbie was a good one. 
What about uh, I don't know freaking women actresses. So you said um, Jennifer Aniston. Most actresses are women. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna name. I'm gonna name the the obvious ones. Megan Fox. Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> you Fox. got Scarlett Joe. Okay. She's number one. Okay. Scarlett what movie was she Joe. in recently? Avengers. That she's ah. the, the, the Black, Black Widow, Widow movie. I think that was last year. So we got two. We need three more, boys. Three more. What about... Uh, I can't remember her name. She's also a Marvel person. You is can say the character if you need to. The Hulk? Is it uh, <laughs> um, Captain Marvel? Let's I the girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Miss, Miss America? I feel like she would be important, especially that they have a new one coming out soon. Who is that? I can't remember her name. If you'd say the first letter. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Who was it, though? What was her name? I don't know. I just looked up Captain Marvel. Brie Larson? Yeah, Brie Larson. That's what I was thinking of. What uh, never heard the, of her. The girl who's on Suits. Oh, she doesn't even act anymore. No, but she's been popping up on the news lately. How about the Hunger Games uh, chick? That was uh, Lawrence. Uh, yep. Jennifer Lawrence. Number four. Nice. Hunger Games. Let's okay. go. <laughs> there you go. Two, yeah. more, two more. Two, two more. more. You need three and f- five. You have um, one, two, and three. Reese one, two, and four. Witherspoon. No. I don't even know who that is. Who is the chick that was just in the lawsuit with uh, Captain Jack Sparrow? Oh, I know who you're talking about. She's she probably famous Aquaman. just because of that headline. Amber something? Yeah. No. Hmm. Not her. Hmm. Do we Number get five, if I give it a hint, you'll get it. Number three, Spider-Man. Oh, oh, yeah, this is obvious. Come on. Uh, she has one letter yeah, she or has one tons name. Of stuff. She's she a only has one name. Stuff. What? Oh, that kind of hurts. Um. Is it the No Way I don't know if she was in Spider Man or she dates yeah, Spider Man. She is. She's <laughs> in all of them. And she's in a book like she Ginger? Euphoria. Oh, is, it, uh, is, it, is it Yeah. Something with a, a Z? Z, Z. Zendaya. Oh, Zendaya. Zendaya. Yeah. Zendaya. Way to work together, team. We got one more. She is dating Spider Man. That is confirmed. Coming she's in also in Spider Man. Okay. <laughs> that Coming guy's in name at is number uh, five. Any hint at all? Yeah, movie genre, movie name. I can't. Too big. The movie's too big. Yeah. Movie's too big. What's a big movie with the lead female actress? Is the movie like this past year? Or is it kind of older? Older. Is it uh, it's a series? Yeah, series. P- like Harry Potter, Hermione. I don't know her oh, name. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, Emma Stone. Stone. Uh, that's Emma. a different one. She's number, <laughs> she's number six. Emma Roberts? Emma no. Watson? Oh. Yeah. Hey. Emma Watson? Hey. Oh, yeah. Let's Emma go, Watson. Happy. That's what it is. Hermione. <laughs> that's some good teamwork that's there, good. fellas. Oh, that was great. Job. Emma Stone is number six. So <laughs> that's that was hard. <laughs> we did good on that. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. Good job, boys. Well, Happy, thanks for coming on. I got, a, I got a question for us. Oh, sorry. I got a question. I got a question here. I always do that. I got a question. Yeah. We got, so Happy, this is called No Bad Hockey Questions. Okay. So the questions revolve around hockey. And none of the questions that are submitted by our fans are bad questions. We just got to answer them. All right. So, how many penalties can a team take at a time? And how many players does it max out at? I don't know if there's a defined number for this. When you say max out, like how many guys can be in the box or how many get taken off the ice? So I would say with off the ice. Off the ice. Well, because so. the lowest you can go to is three on three. So, two guys can get taken off, but I feel like all five guys can get a penalty at the same time. Yeah, yeah I think penalties it's could be endless because there could be guys that hop the bench and stuff. I, well, I remember because like we had a line brawl and all six of us got thrown out. You too? Yeah, same here. <laughs> That's when I got a beating from a defenseman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I feel like yeah, all all six technically can get taken out, but it ends up being three on three regardless. What happens? At, like, is there a time where you have to have like a, ma- a minimum amount of players to continue a game? Isn't there a number for that? Uh, I think you need eight. Eight, eight to play the game or else you're forfeited basically i think so yeah never experienced it yeah, i don't, I don't know. have it either it's crazy only in beer league <laughs> all right next question why do players use smelling salts on the bench because <laughs> they got to wake up a lot of a lot of the guys nap before a game and use the smelling salts to wake up that's what i noticed yeah it's a very strong odor 
Is it ammonium and, salt? Yeah. And you crack Oof. it open. <laughs> so when, as soon as you crack it, it just releases this very heavy, pungent odor that just makes your eyes water. It goes way up. You can literally feel it in, like your head and stuff. And uh, yeah, some guys like to use them a little more than others. And some guys on our team like to use multiple. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, last guy question. Just here. stick them two in his <laughs> nostrils. <laughs> Is it freezing? No. <laughs> All right, last question. This, this is going to be a group one because I actually do not know the answer to this. What is what is waivers in hockey? So waivers, when, you, when you're when uh, you kind of not sent down, but you're kind of put on like, we don't want you anymore, we don't need you, so somebody can come claim you. So you're not a free agent because you're still playing for that team, but you're no longer wanted, I guess, if that's a way to put it. But there's some guys that get put on waivers and then get brought back. Yeah, so I, it's like a temporary – some teams use it as a temporary way to fix the salary cap. Hey, we got a guy coming in. We're going to send you down for a little bit to figure out the situation. Um, like Kuznetsov. <laughs> yeah. or, or some teams use it as, well, we don't want you anymore. And instead of kind of figuring out a trade, we'll send you on – we'll put you on waivers and somebody will come claim you, I think. Yeah, they don't have to handle your contract. Yeah. Sounds about right. It's very complicated, and, and there's different reasons why teams do it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Thank mm-hmm. you for the questions, everyone. That's no bad hockey questions. Those are fun. Brought to you by No Bad. <laughs> nice hoodie, by the way. Appreciate it. Yeah. Speaking of No Bad, nice hoodie. It's still the most comfortable thing I own. Let's say that a little louder. <laughs> it is still the most comfortable hoodie I own. Uh, <laughs> you heard it here first. Well, buddy, thank you for joining. I appreciate the invite. It's we always saw. a blast talking with you a lot guys. Of fun. Seeing you a lot more as we move towards uh Frozen Four. Yep. Yep. It's here in April. Um hopefully a few more skates this summer. We'll figure that out. But uh cheers to you and Chloe on welcoming Gabriella into the world in June. Thank it's you. An exciting time. So very check very out exciting. Mr. Heffy on all social media platforms and uh, you will not be disappointed. Mm-hmm. And don't forget to get your no bad hoodies. Boom. There I'm just plugging go. away here. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.